Hello again, though if you are new with us, welcome to the Canting Club. Here at the Canting Club, we love to rediscover wines that were once famous but have slipped out of fashion. Wines like Muscadet from France, Dow from Portugal. Italian whites seem particularly prone to this. We've already rediscovered Suave and Frascati, and this week it's the turn of Orvieto, the once famous white from central Italy that your parents and grandparents used to drink in the 60s and 70s, but you just don't see anymore. This one is from one of the greatest producers in the region, Sergio Mortura. It's his top Orvieto called Tragognano, made from a blend of Procanico, Verdello, Grecchetto and Rupeccio. It's a young wine, only 2016, but it doesn't look it. There's no hint of youthful green in this wine's pale straw colour. Despite that pallor, it's got quite strong legs on the side of the glass when I swirl it, indicating it's quite high 14% alcohol. Oh, that's beautiful. It's subtle yet penetrating, tickles the sinuses. Quite a mineral scent, it's sort of that there's a powdery quality to it, almost of artist's paints. And it's subtly floral, perhaps acacia blossom. Even more like some low-growing rockery plant that's got clusters of little white florets. Bees love it, but I don't know what it's called. <laughs> it's not very fruity. There's some citrus pith and some apple skin, but it's much more actually about fresh green herbs. Thai basil and sage and thyme. It smells very dry and somehow sharp, yet there's a medicinal richness, a depth to it, perhaps down to the alcohol, that is indicative of ripeness. Oh, lovely nose. Mm. Now it is very dry, but it's surprisingly elegant, not in fact as sharp or as powerfully flavoured as the nose implied. Well, at least not at first. This is a back-loaded wine with acidity and body and intensity that all build through the palate. The flavour's not easy to describe. Lots of complexity here and it tastes really concentrated without actually tasting of anything very much. There's yellow apple, and some quite subtle, not very sharp citrus here, like a pomelo. Lots of peppery spice for sure. And a stony mineral quality that nevertheless tastes ripe. I love the way this builds through the palate and, and it puts on weight and becomes really quite full bodied, but never heavy. And I think that's down to, especially not for a 14%, and I think that's down to the way the acidity builds with it. You notice that more on the mouth-watering finish than you do on the first sip. Also on the finish, lots of pepper spice and some subtle almond nuttiness. Very Italian, that. It's ever so slightly bitter, but not enough to absolutely require food. And it lasts. It's got a satisfying length to it. So this is a wine you don't need to rush back to to find out what it tasted like. It's classy, understated and fine. And it just gets better with every mouthful. Cheers.